If you have kids, it's likely that one day they would want to attend college. There are many different ways to save for college, but in this video, I want to share with you one great option called the 529 College Savings Plan. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Thinking about saving for your child's education can be daunting. I have two kids, and even though they won't be college age for another 10 years, I still get nervous thinking about how I would fund their education. Thankfully, I started learning about the 529 College Savings Plan early on, and started funding them as soon as my kids were born. Though I know it won't solve all the unknown challenges of college education in the future, I'm hopeful that it will alleviate some of the financial burden. This video is broken into three parts, so feel free to skip around to the section you would find most useful. First, we'll review the fundamentals of the 529 College Savings Plan and why you would want to consider investing in them. Second, we'll walk through some 529 investment options, specifically Vanguard, since this is where I keep my kids' 529s. And third, we'll cover some of the most frequently asked questions around the 529 College Savings Plan. All right, to start out with, what is a 529 College Savings Plan? The name 529 actually comes from a section number 529 in the Internal Revenue Code. There are actually two varieties of the 529. The savings plan, which we'll cover in this video, and the other, a prepaid tuition, which I won't cover here. The main thing to note regarding the prepaid tuition is that you typically pay the tuition at the current rate, and your child will have his or her tuition covered later on, regardless of the cost of the time. But a lot of times, you're limited to in-state public colleges. I personally don't want to limit my kids' college options, so I prefer the 529 savings plan, which has more flexibility. The key reason you want to save for college in a 529 savings plan versus just a regular brokerage investment account is because of its tax benefits. The 529 plan allows you to have tax deferred growth and tax-free withdrawals for qualified education expenses. And this is primarily from federal taxes. State tax benefits vary upon what state you live in. In essence, it's very similar to a Roth IRA, but for education. You invest post-tax dollars and your investment grows tax-free. Now, the caveat here is that you need to use the money for qualifying education expenses such as tuition, books, and room and board. And there are ineligible expenses such as health insurance and transportation. Though they might be education related, they technically aren't qualified. But by using a 529 college savings plan versus a regular brokerage account, you can save thousands of dollars in taxes on all these college related expenses you would have had to pay for anyways. Another major benefit to a 529 college savings plan is its flexibility around the beneficiary. The account allows you to save for literally anyone, even yourself. And if your child doesn't end up using the money for education expenses, you can change the beneficiary. It could be for yourself or maybe another member of the family that would benefit from it. Now, the key is it still needs to be used for qualified educational expenses. If you use your 529 money for non-qualified expenses, you may incur 10% in penalty and will also be subject to income tax. Tied to the flexibility to the beneficiary is the fact that you can open one up anytime, even if you don't have kids yet. You can open a 529 and add them as a beneficiary after they're born. You would essentially just place yourself as a beneficiary and change it in due time. The key reason you want to do this is to get a head start on college savings. You're essentially investing this money, so the more time it has to compound, the more money you'll have available when it comes time for college. And also, as I alluded to earlier, in comparison to a prepaid plan, you can use the withdrawals from the 529 college savings plan and any eligible institution of higher education. And that includes not only four-year colleges and universities, but also qualifying two-year associate degree programs, trade schools, and vocational schools, both at home and abroad. This means that if your child chooses to pursue post-secondary training in their chosen field, whether as a computer scientist, a mechanic, or an artist, there's a good chance you can pay for that training with your 529 plan. All right, now that you're convinced that you want to open up a 529 college savings plan for your child, let's look at some options on how and where to open one up. My go-to investment firm is Vanguard, and that is where I hold my kids' 529 plans, so we'll deep dive into a few of the Vanguard's options. I have a link to the Vanguard's 529 page in the description below, but you can also just Google Vanguard and 529 and find the site. What you notice here is that there are two distinct buckets of portfolio options. Individual 529 portfolios and target enrollment portfolio. If you have a good understanding of your risk tolerance and the investment approach you want to take, individual 529 portfolio might be ideal for you. There are quite a few lists of options you can choose from. They range from straightforward S&P 500 index fund to bond portfolios. Personally, I like simplicity, so I prefer the target enrollment portfolio. It is very similar to a target retirement fund, where based on your retirement age, the work of diversification and asset allocation is done for you by Vanguard. In the same principle, based upon when your child is expected to enter college, you find and invest in that one portfolio. 
In addition, the IRS regulation only allows you to exchange money from your current 529 investment option to a different option only twice a year. So I prefer the set it and forget it method in order to minimize any complications with the IRS. When you click into the target enrollment portfolio page, you'll see a list of target enrollment funds with the expected start of the school year. My son is 80 years old now, so I'll pick a target enrollment 2032-2033, 10 years from now when he would ideally be starting college. As you can see here, target enrollment portfolios are diversified among stocks, bonds, and cash investments. It shows that 65% of the fund is in stocks now because we're 10 years out from when we plan on withdrawing the money. The asset allocation in each portfolio will automatically adjust to a more conservative mix as my son gets to the first day of school. So by the time we're ready to withdraw, we would have more money in bonds and short-term reserves and less in stocks. What we wouldn't want to happen is to have all his college money in stocks the day before his tuition is due, the market drops by 30%, and we're forced to sell at a loss because we were being too risky. Let's delve a bit deeper into a specific fund to understand the underlying funds and cost. The stocks are made up of Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Fund and Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund. Great funds that I would have chosen myself if I was designing the portfolio. And the bonds are made up of index funds as well. Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund and International Bond Index Fund. What I like about these underlying funds is that they are well diversified index funds. Diversification minimizes the risk of being too heavily invested in one company, one industry, or in this case, even one country. The expense ratio of this fund is 0.14%. This means that if you have $10,000 invested in this target enrollment portfolio, you're essentially paying $14 for Vanguard to manage this fund for you. For $14, Vanguard is doing the work of managing the index funds, compiling them into single portfolios, and managing the asset allocation as your child gets closer to his first day of college. All right, let's take a look at some frequently asked questions around the 529 college savings plan. The most common question around the 529 is, what if my kid decides that he or she doesn't want to go to college? Or what if my kid receives a scholarship? What do I do with the money inside the 529 college savings plan? In such a case, you can look for someone else who might be able to use the money. Remember, you can change the beneficiary of the account to anyone. I actually had this conversation with my wife, and both of us agreed that either one of us would be more than happy to go back to school if time and money allowed it. And I'm sure you can find a nephew or a niece that would greatly appreciate becoming a beneficiary. A scenario where you pass it down to a grandchild would also be pretty amazing. Imagine if you decided to keep the money in the account, and you allowed three additional decades of tax-free compounding to work its magic it could probably fund multiple grandkids' higher education. Another common question is what would happen if you just decided to pull the money out? Life happens, and there might be circumstances where you just want to access the money in the 529. In such case, you have to understand that there are penalties. It's very similar to accessing your retirement account before your retirement age. You'll owe 10% in penalties, plus income tax on the money used for non-eligible purchases. Depending on your income bracket and how much the money in the account is earnings versus basis, it could add up to quite a bit. This is a good time to point out that you should really only invest in a 529 plan when your own retirement and finances are in good order. There are creative ways to fund your child's education, but when it comes to your overhead and retirement, there are much less options. Another frequently asked question is, am I a bad parent if I don't open a 529 college savings plan for my child? And I want to say, absolutely not. Let me share with you some statistics. According to the Federal Reserve, only about 2.5% of the U.S. households had a 529 plan in 2013. And for the majority of the low-income families, it's pretty much zero. The fact is that despite the 529 college savings plan having been around for a while, not many people are investing in them. It's actually a very small minority. And a huge part of that has to do with just life circumstances. There are priorities, and it's crucial that your retirement and your personal finances are taken care of before funding your child's schooling. By taking care of yourself, you're essentially taking care of your family and your kids. And there are so many different creative ways to fund college. I myself was able to pay for college through the Army ROTC program, and my wife was able to get her nursing degree paid for by her future hospital employer. 529 savings plan is a great option to save for college, but it needs to make sense in you and your family situation. In a selfish way, I know that even if my kids don't end up using the funds in the 529 college savings plan, I can think of a hundred different ways I would personally like to use it for myself. I'm a horrible cook, so maybe I could try my luck in French culinary arts? Thank you guys for watching. If you want to learn more about some great career options for your kids in the future, check out this video here.